Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now, NCIX is pretty seriously about letting you get your cryptocurrency mojo on. So this hardware we're gonna be showing you guys today, this hardware is all about getting the maximum performance out of your system at a minimal cost for Bitcoin. Well, not so much Bitcoin these days because people are using ASIC miners, although I guess you could plug those into this with the, some of this stuff. Anyway, this one is more optimized for Litecoin mining. Now, before we get started, the idea behind mining is that you are trying to maximize the performance of your system, but minimize the, uh, the expenditure that you have to put out there on stuff that doesn't affect performance. So things like motherboards and CPUs that are not that helpful for mining. So this requires you to use your hardware in sometimes ways that are not really intended by the manufacturer. That's my long drawn out way of saying, don't try this at home unless you want to get the best performance per dollar out of, out of crypto coin mining. So there, anyway. Here in front of me, we have all the ingredients for building an ultimate mining ring. Rig. Ring. A mining ring rig, if you were to create like a ring of miner anyway. There's no expensive chassis or like, there's no expensive motherboard or anything that you're going to be modding or anything like that. What we have here instead is a special prototype that is designed for maximum, that is to say completely unrestricted airflow and lightweight. I can actually hold up this whole thing while supporting uh, a metric butt ton of graphics cards. So let's walk through what we've got. This weird shaped motherboard that we have down here, as you can see in the B-roll, is just, it's like a long motherboard. It's a long skinny motherboard. It's not as wide as you might expect. And that is because they added PCI Express slots, but not a whole lot else. It doesn't have fancy VRM for the CPU. It has like weird stuff like it has two Molex plugs for um, auxiliary power for the PCI Express slots and while those slots are just PCI 1X, we'll show you what we can do with those a little bit. The next thing you're gonna see is the six R9 280X graphics cards. These are pretty awesome bang for the buck graphics cards for mining right now. These happen to be Gigabyte WinForce cards, which will stay cool enough that we won't experience any thermal throttling. And what's so special about 280Xs? Well, unlike 290 series cards, they don't heat up as much, which means they are less likely to throttle. So especially when you factor in their much lower price, they perform very similarly for mining applications. Now, this rig right here is optimized for Litecoin mining, as I mentioned before, and can't compete really for in Bitcoin mining against something like an ASIC miner, but we'll be doing some experimentation down the line here and you guys will be able to check that out. Now, this is actually the second uh, Bitcoin, uh, or not Bitcoin, okay, crypto coin mining optimized machine that we've done and there are some interesting changes. So unlike using a traditional chassis, of course we have all these PCI slots, but okay, hold on a second, Lance, you got six graphics cards in there, you only had one PCIe 16X slot, how did you do that? Well, well, because we can put in as many graphics cards as we want, we need PCI Express risers. So these little pieces of hardware down here are pretty special. They plug into a PCIe 1X slot because remember guys, these cards are doing all the computational data on the card itself. They don't actually need massive bandwidth between the card and the CPU. All they're looking for is just enough power particularly and enough data in order to function. So PCIe 1X, is lots. So these little risers have Molex plugs to make sure that they're getting enough power and that will work together with the auxiliary Molexes on the motherboard to ensure that you don't burn out your 24 pin. Then they're just little, little PCIe 1X risers so that they're able to run to wherever you need to get them. So this is helpful not only for being able to space them out. So you can see we have six double slot cards installed in one motherboard, but also for being able to plug them all in at the same time at all. All. Now the next thing you might notice is that we've got two power supplies on here. In order to get enough juice and be safely under the power limits for each of these power supplies, we need one of each of these 850 watt power supplies for approximately three cards. If you're going to 
if you're going for 24 seven, seven operation, you don't want your power supply to be at 100% load. Like I know guys, 850 watts is a little bit overkill for three cards each, but you want to overbuild on power supplies because they do tend to degrade a little bit over time as well. So if you're gonna use them in the long term, it's something to consider. We went with Antec High Current Platinums because unlike other power supplies, they have a dedicated OC link port that allows you to actually um, sync the two together so that they will power on and power off together without using a paper clip jammed into one of them or using a weird adapter at the 24 pin ATX connector on the motherboard. So that's just a little handy thing. And then the last reason we chose these is that they are fully modular. The last thing you need when you're mining is more random cables than you already had. And as you can see, in spite of all the graphics cards, this test system actually comes out relatively, relatively stable. Speaking of stable, it is designed to be put down and only down. You're not supposed to pick it up and wave it around like I've been doing because the graphics cards in particular, the power supplies aren't that well supported. There's just one screw on these power supplies. So <laughs> there's something to note. It should be noted that this product isn't even really named yet and uh, it's going to come in painted or powder coated finishes as a final product. This is a prototype. Just wanted to be able to show you guys that this is sort of how it's going to work. There's going to be some removal parts and cool stuff like that. It'll fold down easily for storage and shipping. And there's also an XLATX compatible one that uh, actually no this one is XLATX compatible already so you're not really limited in terms of um, what motherboards and what hardware you could put on it if you wanted to use it as like a sweet test bench when you're finished mining or something like that. There's a hard drive cage slot so you can use that for a three and a half inch drive and all that good stuff. Now one final note guys about Bitcoin mining. We put in an i3 and some Corsair RAM in here but neither of those things really matter. When you're building a mining rig whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogcoin, you know, I don't know, anus coin, whatever kind of, okay, don't, don't put a coin in your anus, please. Um, whatever kind of coin it happens to be, the CPU and RAM are really not that complicated. They don't really matter. So the things to invest in heavily are your graphics cards, your power supplies, and then of course, some of the specialty hardware that you might need like PCIe risers, although they're really not that expensive. Thank you guys very much for checking out this wildly exciting and wildly inappropriate episode of NCIX Tech Tips on the version two of the optimized miner rig. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.